Today, I'm going to show you how I transformed these $25 sneakers into custom kicks that were inspired by Missy Elliott's track, Cool Off. Well, hello everyone, this is Gigi of Puck and Chaos and welcome to this new video where I'm going to take you behind the scenes of my Missy Elliott Cool Off inspired sneaker custom. But first, yes, I did purchase these very used sneakers for $25 off of the app Mercari. I'm a huge fan of purchasing used sneakers for a quarter or half the price off of Mercari or eBay, my personal hunting grounds. But I'll get into that reasoning in another video another time. And second, I missed out on recording some steps of this custom either accidentally or I didn't think you really needed to see it. So I'm going to put a little scoreboard up above on how many times I said I didn't record this, but I promise to get better with time, folks. Okay, let's jump into the video on how I washed, prepped, and painted this shoe. All right, I have my gloves on already, and now I'm going to lay out the supplies I need to wash this shoe and get any excess dirt off of it. So I need a towel, a small bowl of water with laundry detergent, my four scrubbing brushes, and a shoe tree. I'm gonna start by delacing the sneaker and inserting the shoe tree. The shoe tree will help in maintaining the shape of the shoe while I'm putting pressure on it when I start scrubbing with the soapy water. I start with the soft brush to get some suds going and to start loosening up the dirt on the sneaker. I take the medium brush to hit some of the harder spots on the uppers and to start attacking the midsoles and outer soles or the bottom of the sneaker. With a hard or brass bristle brush, I specifically focus on the midsoles and outer soles of the sneaker to try to drag out that really tough grime. Because this insole is just nasty, I decided to rip it out and toss it to the side. Afterwards, I'll clean the inside with a soft bristle brush, not forgetting the inner tongue of the shoe as well. I took the Nike sneaker buckle off and washed the shoelaces by hand. And you do this by dunking and then rubbing them in between your hands. After I've done this, I take out the shoe tree and place the sneaker and laces inside the netted laundry bag and wash the shoe on cold cold or warm cold with a laundry detergent and other towels. Sometimes a comforter to soften the blow of the shoe going through the wash. And while the shoe is going through the wash, I'm cleaning up my space. And this is what the sneaker looks like after it goes through the wash. Not bad. Now I didn't show this in the video, but after the shoe came out of the wash, I immediately inserted the shoe tree back into the shoe again and placed it in the windowsill to dry overnight. The next day, time to get those midsoles back to white. To do this, I needed 40 volume cream hydrogen peroxide and saran wrap. I poured some of that cream into the cap of the bottle, used an extra makeup blending brush I had laying around, and applied the cream to the midsole like so. Now there's already a cracking and separation going on here so always make sure to keep that cream away from the uppers of the shoe. It can cause this kind of cracking and separation or just make it worse. If you do happen to get some on the uppers, easy fix. Just get a wet rag and use your finger to wipe it off. Simple. Now take a sleeve of saran wrap and lightly pat it down over the cream like this. I sit it out on my windowsill or sometimes outside for about 45 to 60 minutes so we can get that direct sunlight. After that time frame, I bring it on inside. Take the saran wrap off and wipe off the cream developer with a wet rag. I know it's subtle, but can you see the difference? This is the untreated side. This is the treated side. In person, I think you'd be more impressed. But moving on, sometimes you want to do two treatments to get that shoe back to a crispy white, but this time around, I thought it was good enough. So I continued by flipping the shoe to the other side and did the same treatment. 
Now I could have done the same treatment to the outer soles or the bottom of the shoe, but I don't know. It's fine. It's good. After that treatment, I thought I'd try this sneaker hack I saw where you use a damp rag and an iron to steam out the creases in a sneaker. You stuff the toe box of the shoe with socks, place the damp rag over that area that needs steaming, and place the hot iron over the rag, producing steam that gets rid of the creasing? Yeah, I didn't see any difference, so I abandoned ship on that idea and moved on with my process. All right, it's time to prep the sneaker. Step one, if you took it out, place the shoe tree back into your shoe. Step two, take 400 to 600 grit sandpaper and 1500 grit sandpaper and start prepping your canvas like this. I usually cut off little squares to do this. After you've done this all over, now it's time to take the factory finish off your shoe. Now let's just take a sidebar really quick for a moment. It's a bit shocking I didn't do this, but make sure if you're using this industrial strength acetone that you do it outside with lots of crosswind and or with a protective mask or respirator on. This stuff is potent and kind of dangerous if you inhale it or get it on your skin. So make sure that you have your dishwashing gloves on and that you at least take this stuff outside to remove the factory finish. I take a bit of acetone, putting it on the cotton ball and working each section of the shoe. I usually use two cotton balls per section. Afterwards, put all this away and now it's time to get into the art. I did this off camera, my bad, but I made a rough layout of the side of the shoe using scrap paper. To make that rough layout, I took a scrap piece of paper and made an impression of the sneaker section using my finger. Crude, but effective, and this is what it looks like. Afterwards, I cut the text out using scissors and an X-Acto knife. And this is the placement of where it'll sit on my shoe. The colors for this project, again inspired by the wardrobe of Missy Elliott's dancers in the video are South Beach Blue, Hot Pink, Light Green, and Orange. In a last minute addition, Yellow. I didn't show this, but the first one to two layers of paint I put down on the shoe are always mixed with Createx's Flexible Adhesion Promoter. I mix seven to 10 drops in with each color of my paint. It's white, but it doesn't lighten the paint, so don't worry about that. And as you can see, I brush it on like normal. This is a superb product I learned from the sneaker artist Wavy Kick Fits that helps prevent cracking or creasing of your paint job. So yeah, it's a staple in my arsenal. And as usual, apply it and then hit it with the blow dryer on the highest setting to help the paint set faster. I mix the flexible adhesion promoter for each base color that I use, one to two coats, every time, especially on areas where I think there may be a lot of creasing on the shoe, like the toe box area. Because I love black piping on my sneaker creations, I'm starting to paint the inner corners of the parts that will have black lining now. All right, now I'm adding those same colors without the flexible adhesive. So just the plain Angelus paint to each area to make sure that the coverage is opaque and even. And here I'm adding the rest of the black piping to my sneaker. It's really simple to do. You already have a guideline, just paint down to the seam. Now to paint the Nike words and logo swoosh, I paint that with a toothpick, a trick I learned from De Jesus Custom Footwear. I'm saying this a lot in this video, but it's not on camera. All you have to do is dip one end of the toothpick into the paint and dot, dot, dot at the area until it looks like this. 
And here is the first leg of the shoe's completion. Now, for the serious part of this sneaker custom. I take my text cutout and place it on my sneaker like so. I then take a regular semi dulled pencil and trace out the outline. Lift it up from time to time to make sure that you didn't miss a section. Now it's time to fill in the text with white. This is how it's looking after one coat. Here's two coats. And this is three coats. Now I take my oil-based Sharpie. Hang on. Oil-based paint marker. Prep the paint marker using an old plastic bubble mailer and start to outline the text. I take the midsole below where I place the text so I can get as close to the bottom of the shoe as possible without getting marker on the midsole. And bam, mission accomplished. Now, I didn't realize I didn't record the process of me adding the accents, the dots, the stars, etc. Oh, don't forget to just put it on the board. <laughs> to finish off and protect my one of a kind artwork, I'm going to apply liquid kicks and factory finish with another fluffy blending brush I had laying around. And when I say you need a little bit of this stuff, I dip the tip of my brush in a cup and it covers a healthy section of the shoe. You do not need to be heavy handed using this stuff. A little goes a very long way. After I brush one light coat on, I let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes and then hit it with a blow dryer. I then do the same thing again, applying a second coat. And that's it, I'm done. Even though I washed the white laces, I tossed them and replaced them with the black laces. And this is the final product slash fashion show. US men's size 10, Euro size 44, a little bit big for my feet, so I'm gonna go ahead and sell this pair on my website. I'll have that link down below, but I wouldn't be surprised if I do this often, as in buy used shoes, clean them up, paint them, and then sell them. It's kind of my jam. I still don't have insoles for these though, so hopefully you'll have some laying around. And that's the end of my video, my good peoples. If you found this tutorial to be entertaining, punch that thumbs up button and I would sincerely appreciate it. And if you think you might want to be notified when I do yet another shoe custom, they're coming down the pipeline, please subscribe. Links are down below if you want to know about any products I used. And if you have any questions, drop them down below. I have such a small following that I can do a little Q&A and I'm down for it. This is Gigi of Fucking Chaos, and I'll see you in the next video.